Welcome to Location, a local news program. I'm Patrick Gallagher. And I'm Melissa Menser, and here's your news now. And these are your top stories in the Loquitur. The Center for Teaching and Learning celebrated its fourth birthday on Thursday, January 20th in the Idarola Center. Candy, games, and cakes were provided and prizes were awarded to those who participated in the games. The celebration was one of the CTL's frequent celebrations. To promote positive body image, the Body Image Coalition hosted the beautiful fashion show. The Body Image Coalition at Cabrini, along with other colleges and universities across the country, are working to prevent eating disorders, which affect 7 million men and women in our country. To connect with the surrounding community, students are being encouraged to work with the Coordinated Homeless Outreach Center in Norristown. The partnership is being sponsored by the Wolfington Center. Through the partnership, participants are hoping to plan both on and off campus events. And those were your top stories in this week's edition of The Loquitur. For more information on any of these stories, please visit thelocator.com or pick up a copy of the paper around campus. On January 25th, President Obama presented his State of the Union speech. He focused on stopping economic decline through renovation and to cut the deficit by reining in wasteful spending. Obama also pledged to veto any bills that contain earmarks and looks to cut corporate tax rates if it does not raise the deficit. On Friday, January 21st, an open mic night was held at Jasmine's Cafe. Let's take a look. Open mic night was held in Jasmine's Cafe on January 21st at 9 o'clock p.m. Students were encouraged to perform at open mic night in competition to be the opening performance for the Matt Santry Band at the Milk Boy Cafe in Ardmore on Thursday, February 3rd. You can catch more performances at the next open mic night on Tuesday, February 8th in Grace Hall. Tickets for Matt's performance at the Milk Boy Cafe are available in the SEAL office for $3, which include the ticket to the show as well as transportation to and from the cafe. For location, I'm John Blackwood. Now back to you at the news desk. And now let's take a trip around the world. An advisory committee to the FDA approved the brain scan to detect Alzheimer's disease. The scan shows plaque buildup in a living person's brain. Without the scan, the only other possible way to detect plaque in the brain is to perform an autopsy. The President of China has started to prepare for his departure from office. The plan to have a successor had been secretly determined years ago. A new successor is being prepared. The person soon to take office is presently the Vice President of China. A year and a half after returning to work following a liver transplant, Steve Jobs, the co-founder of Apple, is taking a medical leave of absence due to problems with his immune system. The company's operations have been turned over to the chief operating officer. Jobs will remain as chief executive and hopes to return soon. The Irish Prime Minister said on Saturday that he is giving up his post as party leader for Fianna Fáil. However, he will remain in office as the Prime Minister until elections in March. His focus until the elections will be to pass legislations which include sharp cuts in pension and minimum wage. And that was your trip around the world. And now let's check in with Liz and our person of the week. Hi everyone, today I'm here with Amy Simo, freshman biology major, to talk about how her first year at Cabrini is going. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me. Before you came to Cabrini College, you actually went to Cabrini High School. Could you tell us what sparked your interest in coming to Cabrini College? Um, I loved Cabrini High School and I also, I love Mother Cabrini's mission. Um, and since I was in third grade, I wanted to go to Cabrini High School. And then when I found out there was a college in my junior year, I was like, oh my gosh, definitely, definitely want to go there. Oh, that's awesome. Now you live in New Orleans, which is quite a drive, quite a long distance. Did you look at other schools around here or were you mainly focused on Cabrini? Um, I was mainly focused on Cabrini and the other school that I was interested in was St. Um, Peter's College in Jersey City, New Jersey. Um, I had no interest in any schools in Louisiana at all. Oh, okay. Now, 
you received the Cabrini Scholarship, which is a wonderful thing. Um, could you tell us a little bit about that, how you went about getting, like applying for that and all of the little intricate details? Um, I had to apply to Cabrini College and get my acceptance letter. And then after I typed, I think it was a one page um, essay on why I wanted to come here and how Mother Cabrini's influenced my life. And um, that was due on Fe in February, I think it was 27th was the day it was due. Um, and then a few months later, I was called down to the office and they had a t-shirt for me and a little pennant to hang in my room and, um, and some balloons. And they said, oh, you won the scholarship. So it was very exciting. Oh my gosh, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. Now, can you tell us how your first year has been going so far? Are you enjoying it? Are your classes hard? Give us some insight. Uh, I love it here. Uh, I don't think that the classes are very hard. I think there's a challenge to them, but uh, I find that all the teachers are willing to give a helping hand. Um, I, I'm so impressed with how much the faculty is willing to reach out and help the students. And I don't think that this is uh, a hard year. I don't think freshman year is hard. I just think it's uh, a bit of a challenge. Okay. Thank you so much for um, joining us today, Amy. It was a pleasure having you. Oh, thank you so much. Now back to Pat and Alyssa at the news desk. And now let's check in with Patrick Gallagher for your sports updates. So what do you have for us this week, Pat? This past Monday, the Cabrini men's basketball team beat Newman University Knights 71-69 at the near-new field house. In the game, junior guard John Boyd scored a team-high 26 points, recorded five rebounds, four steals, and three assists. This game marks a 28th straight victory at home for the Cavs against a CSAC opponent. The Cavs are set to take on Eastern University in the Battle of Eagle Road on this Monday at 8 o'clock. While the men's team was successful in beating the Knights, the women's basketball team was not as fortunate. The Lady Cavs fell to the Newman Knights in the doubleheader 51-49. The Lady Cavs also recently played Centenary College and lost 62-71. In this game against the Cyclones, freshman guard Brittany Sandeau netted 11 points for the Lady Cavs. Let's take a look at some of the game against the Cyclones. The Lady Cavaliers were looking for their fourth conference win Saturday versus Centenary College. The win was looking promising when the Cavs came from behind to put the game into overtime. Junior guard Laura Karen made back-to-back -back baskets to tie the game up at 54-54. Centenary went on a 6-0 run to start the beginning of overtime. The Lady Cavs answered back with five straight baskets to make the score 60-59. Unfortunately, over the last two minutes of overtime, the Cyclones went on an 11-0 run to end the game with a final score of 71-62. The Lady Cavs are now 4-11 overall and 3-4 in the conference. Stay tuned to location for more sports coverage. In Philly sports news, the Flyers beat the Canadiens 5-2 at the Wells Fargo Center on Tuesday night. This game marked the 1,000th win for the Flyers franchise and it marked the first time an expansion-era team won its 1,000th game. This win brings the Flyers' overall record to 32-12-5 going into the All-Star break. That's all I have for you this week. Be sure to tune in next week for more Cabrini and Philadelphia sports coverage. Thanks, Pat. And now let's check in with Danielle McLaughlin for your red carpet rants. Hey, guys. Danielle here with your entertainment news. This past weekend, commercial after commercial aired about Oprah revealing a big secret on her show. So what was the secret? Looks like Oprah has a half-sister. A woman by the name of Patricia was born in 1963 and was given up for adoption by Oprah's mother, Vernita Lee. Oprah recently revealed on her show that Patri Patricia is in fact her half-sister. Are you confused about the Zodiac change? Let's check in with Ian to separate fact from fiction. With all the hype over the supposed discovery of a 13th Zodiac sign, many people are actually confused and misinformed about how it affects them. The rumor itself has generated a lot of mostly negative attention. Here's what some Cabrini faculty and students have to say about the Constellation controversy. Everyone thinks that there's Zodiac sign change. It's pretty funny. I was really upset. First I thought it was a giant hoax. I think the new Zodiac sign is really interesting. We heard people down the hall from us screaming that they were still Capricorns. I heard everybody get all angry about it. The Zodiac is not real. It doesn't mean that much to me. I can't even pronounce the new sign. Let's start by looking at the Constellation itself. 
Ophiuchus is a man grabbing a serpent, and it's pronounced Ophiuchus. Just as complicated as the name itself, most people do not know the whole truth about whether the constellation is a new sign or not. The internet does not seem to help answer the confusion. Here's what some Cabrini faculty and students know. They didn't, like, a lot of people don't know that it only matters for people born, like, since the um, stars realign themselves. I honestly don't know anything. It only applies if you were born after 2009. I heard in the news that uh, the horoscopes are based off the planets, um, so therefore there is no new planet and that um, there is no new horoscope. Actually, all of those statements are not true. According to the horoscope website dailyhoroscope.com, Ophiuchus is not actually an astrology issue, but an astronomy issue. There is in fact no addition of a zodiac sign to the conventional system. The bottom line is, if you're a Libra, you're still a Libra. I'm completely an Aries through and through. There's just no changing your sign. Reporting on location, I'm Ian O'Neill. In other news, we all know Lady Gaga is known for her quirky, unique sense of style, which is why it shouldn't be any surprise that her new music video for her new hit single, Born This Way, actually brought her makeup artist to tears. There is no set date for the release of the video, but it seems like it's going to be greatly anticipated. In local news, one-hit wonder diva Kia Shimon, a.k.a. the singer of the hit song My Neck, My Back, wished yours truly a happy 21st birthday via social media site Twitter. Kia stated, Happy 21st birthday, boo. The Lord bless you and prepare a table for you be before your enemies. Yes, amen, baby girl. Well, that's all I have for you this week. Tune in next week for more entertainment news. I'm Danielle McLaughlin. Back to you at the news desk. Thanks, Danielle. And now let's check in with Ian for Just a Thought. Hey, it's Ian here for Just a Thought. You know, we recently just had one of the coolest, coldest days in quite some time, and it boggles my mind when people don't dress appropriately for the weather. Let's take the wearing of shorts in the outside in the wintertime. It just it does not make sense to put your body through that kind of torture. Did you forget to do your laundry? I bet these are the same people that complain about getting a cold. If that's the case, that must be the reason for the thousands of annoying cold relief commercials I see every two minutes. It's probably those people with their shorts on. The wearing of winter clothing in the summertime is equally as bad. There's a reason why khakis were invented. It's so you wouldn't have to wear black in the hot sun. I can understand if you're required to for professional reasons, but it's the other reasons that I just don't get. I have a challenge for everyone who thinks wearing shorts in the zero below weather is a hip thing to do. Come back to the real world, try wearing pants, and you'll see why everyone else does it. It's warm, but very cool. I'm Ian O'Neill, and that's just a thought. Thanks, Ian. Well, that's all we have time for you this week. Be sure to check us out at thelocator.com and subscribe to our podcast on iTunes. I'm Melissa Menser. And I'm Patrick Gallagher. Have fun out in the snow, Cabrini.